Hey guys, before we get to the video, please click that subscribe button. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin Air serving the Middle Peninsula and the Northern Neck of Virginia. And I wanted to do a video on one of the most controversial topics in the heating and air trade. And I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna talk about heating and air sizing. And you know, before I get into all this, I do have a few disclaimers that I want to mention. Uh, the first thing is I'm only going to be talking to you know you guys that are homeowners, residential applications. I know you folks that are up against industrial, commercial type uh, challenges. It's a whole nother animal, totally different set of rules, and we're not going to be talking about any of that in this video. So we're only going to stick to residential stuff. And my other disclaimer is every market is different. Some of the things I'm going to run through uh, is controversial because every area is different. Every area of the country, every area of the world, and you're going to see different types of challenges, meaning humidity and you know sizing and other conditions like where the units are located and maybe what their atmosphere is subject to. So that's the disclaimers. And so we're going to talk about a couple different things. We're not just going to say, you know, air conditioners are too big or too small or whatever. We're going to go through a list here and we're going to talk about things that I think that, you know, you need to know, maybe some things to think about. But again, because every area is different, I would defer to your local expert, your local heating and air guy that does this for a living. I can tell you that there are folks that come into our market where we're located in Virginia and they'll oversize systems or they won't understand that some of the challenges we're up against. Another area of the US I always hear about is the Northwest part of the United States because the air is more of a cooler, uh, more humid, clammy type of feel. And so you guys have, uh, you know, challenges that we don't have here. So let's go through this. The first thing I want to just kind of touch on, and again, every area is different, but I want to just say in general, just starting out, if we're talking about heating and heating alone, um, you have a little bit more, I would say, play, a little more cushion than you will when we get to talking about air conditioning and some of that stuff. So what I mean by that is, I see systems all the time that, it, you know, for the heating, it's actually oversized for the space for one reason or another, and it's not the end of the world. Again, that's just a general rule of thumb. So if, you know, if you have an electric or uh, some sort of fossil fuel being burned or however you're heating your home, I would say that in general, if it has more BTUs than what that space calls for, it's not the end of the world. And in fact, I can think of certain applications where they intentionally oversize things. Um, one thing that just comes to mind is mobile homes. Uh, we see mobile home furnaces put in, they're high static applications, and we'll see them install really large heat kits in these you know furnaces uh they're straight electric and all that good stuff but you know i think the thought process is you know we're going to be burning a bunch of electricity right here let's heat the home as quick as we can and get that thing off uh I, you know so it's not the end of the world is all i'm saying if it's a little oversized uh you know it's not the end of the world in general another thing i would just say is you know if you have other types of heating systems like radiant floor hydronic heating things like that again i wouldn't lose sleep i've even been on projects where you know they're building one wing of the house and they're going to heat that with this system and another wing or something like that isn't done yet and they're wondering you know if the system's going to be oversized and heating it should be no big deal in most cases uh, again, every market is different. Area, every area is different. I keep saying that because it is. D I would just defer, ask your local expert and see what they think. The next thing I just want to touch on before we move on to air conditioning and heat pumps is dehumidifiers. Uh, I love dehumidifiers and talking about them because I've seen a lot of misinformation out there. But again, I would say as a general rule, you cannot oversize a dehumidifier. You can undersize it and it just can't reach the humidity set point that you have it set at, depending on the market and all the conditions and thought, you know, all those things like that. But you can't really oversize a dehumidifier in most cases because all it's going to do is it's going to remove that humidity, get that set point, you know, where you have it set, 
and should be no big deal. So let's talk about the big elephant in the room, one of the most controversial topics in the heating and air industry. And the reason I say it's controversial is I hear all the time, and it's true with my experience as well, is most systems when we go to someone's home their system is not sized properly for their house in our particular area i see them oversized a lot but you know you'll see different times when it's oversized or undersized it's not sized properly and why does that matter well in general if a system is undersized for a home or space then you know, obviously it's gonna to struggle to keep up in those extreme temperatures. So, you know, if you got a hot summer day and you got a two ton system there and it should be a three ton, it may struggle to, you know, get that heat down and reach temperature. And you might say, well, what, what do you mean by tonnage? All we're talking about is BTU. So when you hear folks say, oh, that's a two ton system, four ton system, whatever, all they're talking about is the capacity, the BTUs that that system makes. Uh, we'll send folks different proposals sometimes and they'll have different SEER ratings and they'll say, well, will this system keep up? Well, they're all the same capacity. It, you know, we're giving you the properly sized system here. Also keep in mind, if we're talking about heat pumps, again, I've seen houses where the heat pump may be, you know, undersized or too big or whatever and it, in heating mode and you know you have those challenges but then you get to air conditioning mode and you're back up against the same challenges that you do with straight air conditioning and so just keep that in mind that all the heat pump is is a air conditioner that runs backwards in the winter time to provide heat right and so in that summertime it still has the same challenges if you undersize it it won't reach temperature that's undersizing what happens if you oversize it uh, you know we talked about heating oversizing it and it'll heat the space really quickly and shut off and that's not necessarily a horrible thing why is it such a big deal when we're talking about air conditioning well the first thing is it will make the system not dehumidify enough. And in a lot of markets, especially the market that I'm in, that's a big deal. Uh, pretty much anywhere on the East Coast, that's a big deal. The further south you get, the bigger of a deal it is. I remember years ago, I worked for a property management company and we had a, a property down in Florida that was having all these mold issues and they found out that it had to do with the air conditioning in the apartments and all this. It was just a nightmare. And so all I'm saying is if it's oversized, what happens is the system will run, cool the space really quickly. It doesn't remove enough humidity from the space where heat meets cold, right? So you got these hot walls, hot furniture, all this heat, and now you've cooled that space really fast, you're gonna have humidity issues. And you know you can remedy that with dehumidifiers and things like that, but hey, why not size your system to start with properly, right? So that's the first thing. And then, you know, I, honestly, I think that's the biggest thing, but if you're in a market where, you know, humidity is not an issue, it's dry air, you know, maybe you're out in the West somewhere and it's basically a desert and that's not such a big deal, then I would just say that you need to worry about it for short cycling and things like that. So, you know, if the system's oversized for the space, it cools the space really quickly, you're getting this short cycling instead of, it's actually, a lot of folks don't realize it's less efficient for that system to be on, off, on, off, rather than being sized properly on a hot summer day and just running for long periods of times instead of having those spikes in energy. Hopefully that makes sense. You can oversize it and you can undersize it in a lot of markets. Now that we've said all that, I do have an exception to that rule. And that is, we are seeing, if you have a system that are that is three things, three things. First of all, it has variable speed, indoor motor, okay? Indoor fan motor is variable speed. The second thing is, it's an inverter system. So your outdoor compressor can ramp up and down, right? And then the third thing is it's communicating system where they can communicate with one another. I know we've actually installed some of those Bosch products and some of those products that are coming out. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but you know, even though they're inverter technology and they're more efficient, you still have those same challenges of sizing and all that good stuff. But when we're talking about 
the three things I just talked about, the system is variable speed indoor, inverter, outdoor, and then communicating, then that system, you can technically oversize it and it be okay. And what I mean by that is if it's running at 100% capacity, yeah, it's oversized, but it's rarely going to do that. So if you have everything set up properly, that system's going to at times just barely be running, cooling the space, removing the humidity, and keeping you comfortable. And the way I can definitely tell you is check out a lot of the ductless systems that are being installed today. And I'm not talking about those El Cheapo ones you can find online. I'm talking about the guys that are the best at what they do. Guys like Daikin, Mitsubishi, and then some of these other folks like Fujitsu that are coming along. So a, you know, a great inverter system, communicating ductless system, and we're seeing those you know, work tremendously in spaces that technically it might be oversized and things like that. Now, again, I know I'm throwing blanket rule of thumbs. That's why a lot of this stuff is controversial and all that good stuff. I'm sure someone will comment on this and, you know, I get heat and air guys all the time telling me why I'm wrong and that's fine. But I just, I'm giving you a few things to think about when it comes to that stuff. The last thing I'm gonna say before we wrap up is ductwork. Again, there's so much misinformation out there. Ductwork sizing is probably just as important as the sizing of the system. Uh, you know, I don't think I mentioned, but if you're actually sizing a system for a home, doing a proper heat load calculation, getting a, a contractor that you know knows how to do that and figures out the exact size that that home needs to be, the same would be true for the ductwork. Sizing it properly for the proper amount of static and proper amount of airflow and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, just real quick, if a system has ductwork that's undersized, then, you know, you're going to have some more velocity through there, but the system is going to be cut down on capacity because of, uh, the air can't move across that coil like it should. And, you know, imagine if you had to breathe and you covered, you know, half your mouth or even three quarters of your mouth and you had to breathe through that small hole all the time same concept so you got this fan motor trying to either pull air through a return that's too small or push air into you know duct work i always think about like garden hose imagine a garden hose that's kinked right and it's you know you got all this pressure building up so you know you might put your hand over the vents and if it's undersized and say oh you know it's it's blowing my curtains but you what you don't realize is you've actually lost capacity and of course nobody changes their air filters as often as they should and you know now you're losing even more capacity and you know we've seen that a lot you know where folks are just not moving enough air through there and they're having capacity issues they're having issues with the evaporator coil freezing up and things like that and the last thing i'll say is if the ductwork is undersized is it's just harder on that system you know the fan motor especially it's trying to it's trying to push all that air through there and it can't you know it's doing what it can but you're putting a lot more strain on that system than what it should have been you know designed for if it's oversized uh now again we're talking about residential so you can technically i when it comes to my returns i'll oversize them a little bit because i'd rather them be too big than too small but when we're talking about the supply side and we're pushing air through that ductwork that ductwork if it's oversized it actually it's almost like if you were to try to if you took those deep breaths like right you take a deep breath and that system's trying to push this air through this system with too big of duct work the biggest thing is you're not going to get the velocity through those ducts that you should right so it's pushing air and you but you don't have the static and then you start getting to some of these vents that are a little further away from the unit and things like that and you know you're not getting proper amount of airflow if you have one of those homes that you know the one room is colder than the rest or warmer than the rest or things like that I can't tell you how many times that has to do with ductwork sizing. Either it's too big, too small, something's wrong there, and just getting that corrected 
takes care of that. You don't have to go adding a ton more duct work or adding a ductless unit to you know supplement. It's just a matter of getting it sized properly and preferably sized properly from the get-go. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions or suggestions, add them to the comments down below. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you. With all that said, if you're in our coverage area and you are in the market for a new heating and air system, give us a call. We'll give you a free estimate. We'll give you a great warranty, the best warranty, I think, in the area. And, you know, we'd love to earn your business. If you're not in our coverage area, but you're in the market for a new heating and air system, before you spend thousands, check out my website, newhvacguide.com. And the whole idea behind this website is just like a CPA would help you with your taxes, this is gonna help you with the purchase of, in a lot of cases, the third largest investment that you're gonna make. Uh, behind your house, behind your car, a lot of folks, their heating and air system is the third largest investment. With that said, we put so much information on there. I, it's almost as if I wrote a book, decided not to because it, it you know, as soon as I do, it's going to be outdated. New technology comes out, new, all kinds of information comes out. And so this website is like a book, but it's constantly being added and changed. So you know, we even have a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from, things that you want to avoid in your pursuit of purchasing a heating and air system. And we just have the step-by-step -step guide. So newhvacguide.com. And lastly, please subscribe if you haven't already. We really appreciate your support and stay tuned for more videos, tips, tricks, and uh, appreciate it. Thank you.